Hello Kima community. In this video, I want to show you how you can get Kima running on Kubernetes cluster in a Google uh, Kubernetes engine. Of course, because it's a GKE cluster, we need some prerequisites. First of all, we need some domain which you can use for the installation of Kima. But we also need an account on Google Cloud Platform. Just keep in mind, the purpose of this video is not to cover how to acquire prerequisites. Because sometimes you can have them already, sometimes you have to get them all. So you need to acquire the project on your own if you don't have yet on Google Cloud Platform. You need to download um, G Cloud command line tool from GCP if you don't have that one. You also need to acquire domain on your own. For the purpose of this demo, I got the GCP account on my own. I created my new project. I also had to freshly install the G Cloud. And I also had to uh, get a domain, which I could use for free. And it was possible because I found a lot of services that offer free domains. So once you have all those prerequisites, let's just go to first step. First thing you have to do is to set up a DNS in the cloud platform. First, for easy use, let us define the variables. Let's copy the example from here, put our data. Let me now jump to the terminal. Okay, let me paste the variables that I've prepared. Okay, it's done. So you can see that I specified my domain. It's going to be called my Kima demo. The DNS name is the yeah, name of the DNS that I got for free. And yes, then that you can see the dot at the end, it's not a mistake. Then you have to provide the project ID of the project you've created at Google Cloud Platform. And the DNS zone, it's yeah, just the name of the zone. Okay, now let's go back to the instruction. Now I need to create the DNS. With DC Cloud, it's super simple. It's just one liner command. Let me copy that and go back to the terminal. Let me now just paste the copied command and call it. The new DNS zone got created, but yeah, let's confirm with the UI. Here you can see me in the Google Cloud Platform console in the view where you can define the zones manually if you don't want to do it with G Cloud. Let me refresh the page and we should see a new zone created. Yes, perfect. It's here. Let's see the details. Copy this data because you're going to need it for the configuration of your domain. Okay, back to instruction. Let's now jump to step number three. We already have the list of the servers. We just got them from the UI. Now you need to set up your domain to use those servers. You do it with the provider of your new domain. This is not covered with this video because the UI is really different per different providers. Now, once you're done with step number three, you can confirm if everything works by calling this command in the terminal. Let's just copy that. Let's check if everything works. Yeah, that's perfect. So we're done with the setup of the DNS zone. Let us now jump to the TLS certificate creation. I'm gonna first call several commands in the terminal to create a new service account in GCP and also get an access key to it. So let's go back to the terminal. Now let us start with fresh terminal. First, let's create a folder. And now let's create a service account. Now let's bind the new account to the role DNS admin. And last step, let's get the access key. Now let's move back for a second to the instructions. Last two steps that we need to perform are about generating the certificate. We're gonna use a Docker for that to run a special application that will help us to do that. Make sure that you're gonna replace this placeholder with your email address. Now let's paste the Docker command. So the certificate got created successfully. Let us now just clear the screen and export the certificate into the variables. Now go back to the instruction. We are done with the setup of the TLS certificate. Now let's prepare the GKE cluster. Let's start with defining the name of the cluster. Okay, once we have the name, let's now create the cluster in the Europe West region. The cluster got created. The last step is to install Tiller on it. Let's check to what cluster are we connected. So as you can see, GCloud, after creation of the GKE cluster, set the context of your kubectl to point to this new cluster. Now let's go back to the instructions. Now what we have to do is to prepare the installation configuration file. We're gonna do it based on the GitHub release. Of course, the latest one. So we need to now, of course, create a variable that will help us out later with the further instructions. Now let's create a variable and point to the latest release, which is 08 for me. Now we need to download a configuration files. Now for easy use, let's merge those two files into one. I'm gonna call it mykima.yaml. So now the configuration file got created. You can double check if now in the 
my Kima file, you can find information about your domain and also details of the certificate. Let us go back to instructions. Okay, so finally, we can now deploy Kima. We have a GKE cluster ready, DNS ready. Now it's time to really deploy Kima. Let's switch to terminal. Let us make sure to use the proper cluster. Now we should become admins of the cluster. Apply previously created configuration file for the installation. Now our Kima installer should be installed. Let's see if it's stable. All good. Everything is ready. Now let's start the installation. Let's clear the window. If you want to check the status of the installation, the installation can take a few minutes. So just take a break, get a coffee, and come back in a few minutes. Check the latest status. So back after the break, in my case it was not coffee because it would have to be my fourth coffee today. So I just had a pretty good green tea. Hope you enjoyed as well the break. As you can see now, I checked a few times if the installation is done. And now you can see that it is successfully installed. I hope you also managed to get this message. So looking at the instruction, we now of course have to configure our DNS to point to the cluster load balancer. So we need to pair those two entities. As you can see, that's relatively easy. I just copy that and go back to the terminal. I just pasted what I copied from the instruction. DNS records got created. Let us now see in GCP console if that's true. Now I'm in the GCP console. I see my zone. Let's check the status. As you can see, the new records got successfully created. Now let's go back to the instruction. Last step that left is to prepare a cluster for production use because of the certificate in the application connector. But that's the step I don't cover in this video. We are now basically done with the installation. So now it's time to get to our awesome UI, right? The address of the console is console. the subdomain that you used for the installation. And now, of course, we have to log in. The default admin login is admin at kima.cx. But yeah, how to get the password? The password is always randomly generated for the installation. So we need to take it out from Kubernetes secret. Let's see how to do it in the terminal. Okay, we have the password. Let's go back to the browser. Let's check if the password works. Perfect. Now we are in our awesome console UI. Let's see if the functionality actually works. If we have default service brokers installed, Helm broker is in place. Let's see some namespace. Okay, it works like a charm. Catalog has the default classes. So now, just pure fun left. Enjoy fun with Kima. This was Łukasz Górnicki. Thanks for watching. Cheers.